reminder to email your to the point uh, queries to roundtable at reason.com. This one comes from Chris Geary, who writes, I'd like your thoughts on the idea that to improve our collective sense making, it should become a norm for at least all non-opinion news outlets to require their journalists to disclose their voting records. Reason does, did, he says, something similar, yes. Uh, and I think uh, this would be immensely helpful in at least four ways. One, it provides the reader with information that's important context to the story, the postmodern consideration. Two, it establishes a baseline of trust between journalist and recipient. I'm putting my cards on the table. Three, it would encourage the journalist to try to be more balanced in reporting because journo knows what bias reader will be looking for, so journal will want to proactively counter it. And four, it would hopefully shame the publisher into seeking out and hiring journalists with different outlooks, which Jonathan Rauch tells us is necessary for the constitution of knowledge to actually work. I'm sure there would be downsides to but thoughts. I have many of thoughts. We'll get to them. But Catherine, do you want to lead off? Yes. So uh, you're, the letter writer is correct. Reason does do this, has been doing this for a long time. And uh, especially points one and two are mostly the reasons we do it. Um, I am deeply skeptical that point four has very much power uh, because the other publication that has done this uh, in the past with some consistency, although I don't think they do it anymore, is Slate, um, where they're like, um, they make academia look ideologically diverse. <laughs> it's, it's really something. Um, and people don't have any shame about it. I mean, this is we have these findings over and over and over in all of our elite institutions that they are overwhelmingly not just kind of um, philosophically liberal in disposition, but democratically partisan uh, at, at a over 90 percent level, you know, everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And uh, no one no one is, seems to be embarrassed. No one is ashamed. Um, you know, reason does it. Um, we will probably do it again. And uh, when we do it, a bunch of people are going to get their panties in a bunch about it um, because someone well, on our staff. that's because everybody at reason votes for Norman Thomas, right? Someone the on our staff candidate. is going to vote a way that they don't like. And uh, even if in their text of their explanation, they say this is the most grudging possible vote. This is being dragged from me by wild horses only due to a, a tiny uh, reason why this person is marginally less bad than the other person or whatever. Um, the, you know, brain poisoning of partisanship is so bad that people will say, look, I added up all the votes and, you know, there was one Biden voter and two Trump voters and everyone else basically just screamed ah into their answer. But, um, you know, that means that reason endorsed Donald Trump. Right. And that's that's I wish that people wouldn't do that because I don't think that's the point of the exercise. But um, what I think is the point doesn't matter. The whole idea of it is you put it out there and people do with this information what they will. So if I may, uh, Matt, I want to thank you for introducing that awful feature to reason yep. uh, that came in when you uh, darkened our door and mm -hmm. uh, pushed uh, me as editor of the print magazine at the time to do it. What I found most interesting about the um, about the 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 way we do it at reason was that you know people also talked about previous votes uh and then uh, some other question and that we bring in people in our universe that you wouldn't necessarily hear about so it could be Penn Jillette or our you know cartoonist Peter Bag or or thinkers like Stuart Brand people who are adjacent to us and that it just becomes an interesting discussion of what's going on uh, during a presidential election year but also what is a wide range of people you know, who are they voting for and why? That can be kind of interesting. I think what the uh, letter writer is getting at, and this is a very different question, at the New York Times or, you know, the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or, you know, media that pretends to be objective, um, that would be genuinely fascinating, even if they just tabulated uh, without giving the names. They can Correct. anonymize the data and just say, you know what, like we polled X number of staffers who write on a daily basis, and this not the, these this is the breakdown of who's voting for whom or who's not voting. I've met, uh, and I'm struggling to remember any of their names, but that's because I'm struggling to remember all names at this point in my life. But I've met a bunch of like you know high profile legacy media journalists who say I don't vote, 
um, because I would be compromised somehow. I think that's stupid, but I kind of respect that. But I, I would love to see this. I don't. I don't think it, it. It can be interesting as a feature in publications like Slate if they were ever interesting, and it can be interesting. It is interesting in reason style publications, but it, the most interesting thing would be in these other objective groups, and I would like to see that become a norm. I do love the weird reversal of cause and effect <clears throat> that comes in. Um, that comes in that line that you just mentioned, Nick. Like I don't hear it as much anymore. Uh, and I guess I never thought I would miss it, but now I do. But it, it was a very, very common thing for journalists to say, I don't vote because that would bias me, um, right. which is both like, what? No, like the bias would certainly preexist the vote if you yeah. were biased, but also is true. Like it also is true that like if you commit to something, then you then you are more likely to seek out its positive attributes and downplay its negative attributes like it's like a weirdly deep psychological insight that I think people are just saying in a stupid way. Um, so uh, but I, I now am retroactively nostalgic for the days when at least some journalists said that, because now uh, almost every journalist at a publication that would describe itself as objective is, in fact, going to vote for Joe Biden. And many of them will believe that not doing so represents an existential threat um, to the country and to their own profession. The other variation on this, which is good for a laugh, um, is when uh, the nation used to do this all the time, where they would, in every election, there would be a socialist, a Green Party, somebody who embodied everything they stood for, often named Ralph Nader. And they would always say, Ralph, we agree with you 10,000 percent, but this election is too important to vote for the person who perfectly encapsulates what we believe. So would you please drop out so we can vote for a candidate that we loathe ideologically, but obviously support with every fiber of our being? And they just do that on an almost regular basis, which is kind of funny. The Intercept published that exact piece about seven or eight days ago without yeah. necessarily lionizing, you know, Cornell West and and Jill Stein, but um, saying, you know, it's, oh, what a team to you know? to uh, to could soon. they be co-presidents? You know, that would just that's so perfect. Uh, but uh, I was going to say, Catherine, that I um, uh, my lifelong not belonging to a political party is it, totally out of that same impulse. Like, I don't want to join anything because I write about this stuff um, yeah. and also because I'm not the joiner of things at all. Uh, Peter, uh, because you're a moral coward, Matt. That was a clip from the Reason Roundtable podcast. To watch more clips, go here. To watch the whole show, go here and subscribe to the Reason Roundtable wherever you get your podcasts.